Hello, Gary Hernandez here, and welcome to Kane Self Defense with Master Gary Hernandez. In this video, we're going to do something a little different. Now, we do talk a lot, obviously, about the Kane because it's a Kane video and a Kane channel, but we're going to talk about what happens if you lose your Kane or someone starts to pull it out and you have to go to a secondary self defense tool. Now, I have shown what to do when someone starts to pull your cane out and strikes and stuff. And I'll be covering more of that because people wanted me to show them more of that as well. But I do want to span out a little bit with some extra small tools on you that you can use for self-defense. And I'm not going to go over a gun and I'm not going to go over a knife because most people, especially if you have a concealed weapons permit and you're serious about self-defense, you've trained already on the range and hopefully you've trained enough and you know how to use it. Um, Knife's a different animal. If you're not well trained with a knife, you can get it taken away from you and easily killed. So trust me, I train with a knife religiously. Um, we have a knife system in our school. It's totally different for the cane. And it's one wrong move and you can get yourself in a lot of problems. But I'm talking about having something else on you that you can use. Now, I'm gonna go over a small impact weapon. Now, most of you guys or gals know what a Kobaton is. And if you're not familiar with the Kobaton, just a quick brief thing. Kobaton is just a short fighting stick. It's a small impact weapon. A lot of systems use them. A lot of martial arts train with them. And if you go back in the 70s and 80s, this was one of the most popular ones out there. A lot of women used to carry this small Kobaton that they could put their keys on. Uh, and they can strike with the keys or they can hit with it. And this came in metal, wood, plastic, different kinds. Now, there are different versions. You can get a, you can cut a small dowel rod, have the same thing. You can get one that's got a little bit more pointed edge to it. And companies make them. Cold Steel makes one that you can use as an impact weapon. As well as tactical pens. And I've covered tactical pens before. But I'm going to show you something else you can carry on you when you're walking. And it's a good thing to have with you because it's something you can use besides self-defense. And if you happen to drop your cane or someone starts to pull it away, you have a secondary tool. Now, I'm talking about having a small tactical flashlight with you. Besides shining it in your eyes, we're going to cover some of this stuff. Sorry about that, by the way. We're going to go over some ways to use this as a Copatine and an impact weapon. I'm going to show you strikes and I'm going to show you breakaways with this. Now, the one I have here that I've had for, I've had this for well over 10 years. This is Smith & Wesson, and this is a great one. So you can see it right there. And the bezel is made. Now, a lot of people understand when they say tactical. Everything can be tactical these days. But this is basically small. It's made like out of a hard aluminum, like an airplane aluminum. And basically, you can strike with it, and you can. it's strong enough for striking and strong enough for manipulating the joints. Now, everybody likes to tell you the bezel was created for striking. Realistically, a lot of this, now people will do that today, but a lot of the bezels were created back then, so when you drop it, you don't break the glass. But it happens to be very nice that you can use for striking, especially if you were to look at this one. You see how you can rip into some flesh if you have to, and it'll also have DNA on it when you're done. So, I'm going to show you a couple of techniques that you can do. Assisting me is going to be Mr. Bob. Now, besides, I really don't want to blind Bob, but if Bob starts to come up to me and let's say I drop my cane, I can shine it. And I'm going to, I know it's still caught you, but I'm not trying directly in his eyes. I'm trying to shine it away from him so I don't blind him. He comes up to me. I can shine in his eyes just to blind him, and that gives me a second to do a strike. Depending on what kind of flashlight you have, and I'm going to shine it into that camera, so it might be for a little bit, but you're going to get a little bit of a, boom, a good glare in the eyes. And that's daytime, so imagine nighttime in the eyes. So, and you know, you can also have the ones that have the strobe for SOS. There's tons of these out there. I would suggest look around. But number one, we're sitting here, and he happens to grab a hold of, let's say he grabs hold of me. Well, I can simply come up. Now, I can use both ends because both ends are nice and strong. We'll get a little bit closer to the camera. I can literally come up and strike him into the jaw. And then from here, with that sharp bezel, I can hammer down onto the face. I can, he grabs. I can simply strike him into the throat, just like this, and catch him right in the throat. It's an impact tool. 
I can simply also, now because it has a bezel, I'm not gonna go too hard on him, I can simply push down, he will let go real quick. Sorry about that. And if he throws a punch, and I step to one side, I can strike. Now, I can strike him in the head, I can strike him in the ear. I'm not gonna hit him too much here. I can hit him in the back or kidneys and it won't, I mean, it's not gonna feel good. But if I'm older and my life's on the line, he's big and strong, I'm gonna strike him toward the head. Hopefully I don't kill the individual, but I wanna be able to get him off me. Now, he happens to grab my wrist. What I can do is, is simply, now let's say he's super strong and I'm having a hard time doing this, right? Well, I can simply step with it and push. Now what I'm doing is a leverage, not a strength. And Bob's pretty strong, so Bob's holding me, and I was, by the time I do all this fighting, he's beating the tar out of me. So as I pull, and I'm gonna put a little bit of strength here, as I do this, I'm gonna take myself and I'm gonna walk. That's gonna create leverage. That's gonna allow me to bring it up a little bit and allow me to do a breakaway. Now we're gonna get a little bit closer for the camera. So he's got a hold of my, my wrist. Again, if I'm fighting, he's fighting. He's pushing down. Now I can do that old smart trick where I go down and, and hit because as I start to pull, he starts to push and then I, I go down and I ride with it and I strike. But I'm worried about that hand. So as he has me, watch what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna keep this here and he's put a little bit of pressure. He's pushing it downward. I step, notice where the top of my flashlight went, right on his wrist. Now I can hold that and create, sorry, that works. And I can create a manipulating joint lock that will drop him. Or, as you guys, as you got a hold of me, I come up and I can break away and then strike. Now, if I have it in the other hand, he grabs his hand, then I'm simply going to hit him. I can also, let's say this is um, drunk Uncle Bob, and I don't really want to hurt him too much, but I want him off me. I can strike him into the hands. Hey, man. Now, he grabs me from behind in a bear hug. Um, can, can you get me over? Not quite. Okay, let's go under. Let's say you guys me under. I, I can simply dig this bezel into him until he lets go, and then I can step out, elbow, or strike. So with this flashlight, which I can use for looking for things, I can also use it as a secondary self-defense tool. And again, if he throws a punch, I can redirect it, strike him. If he throws a punch, I can step to one side, hit him in the throat. I'll turn this way, sir. He goes throw that punch. I can block it and take in the bezel, strike him into the throat, and then I can follow up with a knee or something like that. He's um, got a hold of me. Now, this right here is a cross grab. From here, again, if he's giving me a hard time, I'm gonna step with it. I can lock him. And anybody that's done have keto, keto, you know about joint locks. You can lock them. But from here, same cross grab. Same, um, cross grab. As he does that, I can come up, break the grab, and I can strike and run. Same side grab. It doesn't matter. I could use the back end of the flashlight, manipulate, and strike. Go ahead and grab and hold on strong. <clears throat> he's, he's here fighting me. So all I want stats there. Now with the step, that helps me break it and then <clears throat> obviously strikes to the base. <clears throat> so you can use this simple flashlight as a self-defense tool. So you have your cane, and <clears throat> you have your flashlight. If you don't, you can do the same with a pen, you can do the same with a dowel rod, you can do the same with the traditional old copaton with the keys on there. Something extra to carry with you, especially if you're walking at night. You know, you're walking around at night, you got a flashlight. You know, you may want to look for stuff. Or in the daytime, just put it in your pocket. You want to make sure <clears throat> that whatever you're using is bigger than your hands. If you got one of those small flashlights or something small, it's not going to be able to do what you want. You want something that's going to give you both sides to defend with. So. <clears throat> Hopefully that helps, and I would get something that's sturdy. S spend a little bit of money. Don't buy a cheap one from, you know, a convenience store. Flashlight's going to break the first time you drop it. Spend a little bit of money. Get a decent one that you can use.
So hopefully that technique helped. As I always say, make it yours, practice it, and thank you very much, Gary Nance, and I will see you guys very soon. Bye.